The opportunity that lured Signori away was the Capella Nova at Orvieto, the artist's undisputed masterpiece. The decoration of this chapel had been started by Fra Angelico in 1447, but he had only completed two segments of the vaults before his death. The patrons tried to find an artist of Angelico's calibre for more than 50 years, and eventually Signorelli, who was described as famous throughout all Italy, was offered the commission in April 1499. His first task was to complete the ceiling, where he painted saints, martyrs and doctors of the church against a golden backdrop and often in animated discussion. He was then asked to paint the walls, which had always been destined to depict scenes from the Last Judgment. Angelico's Last Judgment would, however, have borne no resemblance to Signorelli's. It is still a shock to find so much nudity in a cathedral, and Signorelli seems to have revelled in the opportunity to paint majestic figures on a monumental scale. The result is one of the most dramatic cycles of the Renaissance. The frescoes, which have recently been restored, represent scenes from the end of the world and the Last Judgment. The narrative starts with the deeds of the Antichrist. The Antichrist addresses a crowd from a pedestal. His actions are, quite literally, manipulated by the devil, and the rest of the fresco shows the ways in which he tried to achieve his destructive purpose. By working false miracles, inflicting torments, and distributing seductive gifts. His last profanity was an attempt to fly, but he was struck down by an angel. The frescoes continue on the entrance wall with the signs of the end of the world and the destruction of the world. These scenes are based on the book of Revelation and show how the great day of wrath has come. Signorelli represents the moon becomes blood and shows the stars of heaven falling unto the earth. With breathtaking drama, the artist shows how terrified people would spill out into the chapel on this terrible day. The pace changes with the third scene, the resurrection of the flesh. The idea behind this fresco, that man will be saved at the last judgment, is summed up by St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. At the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. These three frescoes form a coherent group that precedes the narratives at the other end of the chapel. The action here is rather differently arranged. The three scenes depict the Last Judgment, but they are simultaneous rather than consecutive. Christ sits in judgment, a partial survivor from Fra Angelico's original idea. On the left, the blessed are crowned and showered with flowers in the crowning of the elect. This scene contains some of the most striking formulations of classical beauty. On the right, the damned encounter their fate. This fresco, which was the first to be painted, shows the full horror of Judgment Day. A writhing mass of bodies endure the tortures inflicted by multicolored demons. Figures are strangled, bitten, dragged into fiery damnation, and hideously tortured.
Most of the principal narratives are full of extraordinary nudes, sometimes a great classical beauty and monumentality, elsewhere fierce or contorted figures. They are always drawn with supreme confidence, particularly this figure, whose action of garroting his victim is less evident today because the garrot has largely flaked off. Signorelli successfully unified this huge space and his apocalyptic vision is extraordinarily dramatic. The power of his drawing and the strength of his imagination make the chapel one of the most exciting experiences of Renaissance art.